Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I would like to second Sherelle Parker's, uh, Representative Parker's eloquent uh, compliments to you. Um, to follow up on a, some of the comments that Representative Millard made earlier, um, if you could confirm for me uh, some of the comments we had heard in my office as this bill was being circulated for a vote was if it doesn't pass, not only were our roads not going to be repaired and our bridges repaired, but we had a strong chance of losing contractors and skilled labor to other states because the business just wasn't going to be here. Well, that's absolutely true. I mean, the, you know, we talked about, I asked earlier about the, uh, the status of people hiring and what, what it meant in job creation. Um, the, I used the example of when the bridge fire occurred. You know, we had a crane on site the next day here in Harrisburg. We had that, the, uh, our, one of our contractors was able to move a heavy piece of equipment here, get that stabilized, get it taken care of, get that span removed and out of there in three days, get it situation back up into traffic. And the reality is the private sector, 75% of our work goes to the private sector. They look at what our expenditures are going to be. They look at neighboring states. And Maryland had already passed a transportation bill. Virginia had passed a significant transportation bill. We had major companies that were looking at shifting their operations, even their headquarters, to those other states because they saw a declining investment here in Pennsylvania. So it wasn't just job loss. It was skill sets that we were risking had we not done the transportation bill. It happened back in the 70s when the transportation bill or transportation funding went away. You saw... A, all the expertise in transportation, engineering, construction leaving Pennsylvania because there was simply no work. And then when we started to ramp the program back up, we had to build the expertise again. Where are we going to be 10 years from now? How do we keep from getting into this situation again? Um, as an example, I, I just bought a new car and my miles per gallon went from 24 to 36. Same so make and model, no doubt, that they just keep going higher each so, year. Um, instead of eight gallons to get to Harrisburg, it's now six gallons. So obviously that's going to be a reduction in, in some fuel, fuel tax at the wholesale level as well. So um, what do we need to prepare for? Well, I think that for one thing, the, uh, the bill uh, did, because we looked at the oil company franchise tax, it, now we have an inflationary part built into it, which will help. In the past, we had a stagnant fuel tax, a cap on the oil company franchise tax. So in essence, not only inflation in a way, but as you suggest, the uh, fuel efficiency of vehicles, which by the way, is mandated by the federal government to increase by 40% by the year 2016. So that trend you just talked about is gonna accelerate as we get into the federal mandates in 2016. I think where we have to go to beyond Pennsylvania, and this is a national issue that I've talked to Chairman Schuster about and others at the federal level, is we have to get to something that's more mileage based at some point. Because if we got the same demand on the road, you're not, as you suggest, you're not driving less, you're just consuming less fuel. And that's the case. We're seeing total vehicle miles traveled staying the same or growing a little bit, and yet overall fuel consumption going down because of fuel efficiency, both for trucks and for cars, heavy equipment as well. So as we see that in alternative energy forms coming into play to fuel vehicles, you're going to see declining revenues coming out of these sources that we've identified already. So at some point, and I think it probably is about 10 years off, um, is we're going to have to see a, a federal initiative to look at something that's more uniform across the country that's mileage-based, whether that's tolling or whether it's a mileage-based fee is to be determined. But it needs to be a federal-led initiative because um, we need something that uniformly is applied across the country. I think my own personal opinion is that you're probably going to see more tolling likely of the interstates uh, in that 10-year time frame because that's mileage-based. It's easy to, to implement and collect with all electronic tolling. Doing something with vehicle mile traveled is very difficult. What do you do for out-of-state travelers? If you do an odometer tax, what do you do when people are driving in from out of state? Um, but that's something I think will be debated on the federal scene and then hopefully solved in a manner that applies to all states. But I think the bill you just passed is at least buying us 10 years of buying power with inflationary items built into it to help us offset those reductions in gasoline consumption. Would the Finley connector have been built without this bill no. passing? Thank you. And one last question. Um, you had mentioned some of the other states that have passed transportation highway bills recently. The other bordering states to us, have you received phone calls from them? Some of the comments we get in the borders counties are, we'll travel across state lines to get gasoline. Have any of those states contacted you on how we did it? I've talked to people all over the country, frankly, about what, what was passed in Act 89. Uh, it's generated a lot of interest. I was just asked to go down to Washington, D.C. about two weeks ago and, and give a talk about Act 89 to representatives from across the country. Uh, they're very interested in what Pennsylvania legislature did, 
how it was done, what it's going to accomplish, and what it means to investment. Uh, I've talked to 60 Minutes. I've talked to CBS News. There's, there's a national interest in the fact that the federal government is not solving this, and some states are solving it better than others, and Pennsylvania is being looked at as a model uh, of something the other states are looking to to solve their transportation programs. I talked to the Secretary of Delaware, DOT. Governor Mark Kelly has come out and requested a fuel tax increase there. Uh, every state is faced with the same problem, uh, a flat or declining federal investment, and yet a need to take care of infrastructure, basic core function of government. Uh, so every state's looking at how to deal with it, and I've got an intense amount of interest in what we did here in Pennsylvania and how that could be applied in other states.